Guten Morgen, Studenten. Today we're going to take a lesson, a uh, look at lesson uh, 1.5, and talk about those weird magnetic lines that you see uh, in the simulator. We're going to start with a warm up. And in the warm up, you're going to use the magnetic field simulation to figure out how a compass needle responds to a magnetic field and specifically what direction it will point at uh, different locations around a magnet. So you're going to open up the sim. OK, and there's the link. Place a bar magnet in the center of the screen. I would suggest a strong magnet. Then go ahead and press the field lines toggle up in the top of the screen. That's going to be up in the upper right hand corner. <clears throat> and then press uh, run and then analyze and answer uh, this question. Okay, it should take you about five minutes to do. And then we're going to take a look at activity two, <clears throat> which is uh, you're going to reread the article. Remember, we have this scenario where we're part of this uh, agency where we're trying to launch a spacecraft into space using magnets. So we get an email from uh, Dr. Shapiro, who is the lead scientist on this, and it says, your modeling of how magnets affect other objects was excellent. Soon I'll be sending you some specific magnetic field line diagrams that scientists at the Universal Space Agency have put together for you based on our model launcher tests. We will need your help analyzing these diagrams. We think examining the field lines might help us figure out whether the magnets in the model spacecraft and its launcher were misaligned during the Tuesday launch, causing that launch to be slower than expected. We look forward to reading your analysis. So you're going to reread the article that you've already read um, in our last class session and created three annotations for. And you're going to just pick which claim do you think represents what went wrong. So just a review of this, the mag claim number one, the magnets were misaligned on Tuesday. Claim number two, more energy was in the launch system on Wednesday than on Tuesday, or claim three, the magnetic force was stronger for some reason on Wednesday than on Tuesday. So just a reminder, they ran the experiment on Tuesday and it was too slow. They moved them in closer to each other by just a centimeter and they saw an uptick. They moved them in by another centimeter and on Wednesday, when they ran the test, it had overshot the, uh, the speed, the velocity that they were looking for. And so we're trying to figure out why. So these are our possible claims. And, you know, at this point, I don't necessarily expect you to have the answer, but based upon your reading and what we've learned so far, um, I want you to go ahead and just stake a claim here, one, two, or three of what you think. Okay. Um, this gives us uh, just a, a, an analysis here, a, a picture of the proper launch magnet setup um, and the way that it could have been misaligned. So we're going to kind of explore this angle of it being misaligned um, when the test was run on Tuesday. Okay. When we talk about magnetic field lines, we're talking about those invisible lines and they come out of the north end and they go into the south end, okay? And uh, they look very much like this. You're gonna go back to that article on the Earth's geomagnetism, reread that, <clears throat> and then uh, make some predictions about how they will attract each other, how they'll repel each other, okay? Um, and I want you to spend some time really focusing on the second and third paragraphs in order to answer this question. How are magnetic field line models helpful? When we turn on that little switch, what does it tell us? Uh, why would it be useful? So reread 
uh, paying attention to those two paragraphs, especially, and then answer this question and turn that in. Okay. When you reread, I want you to be focusing on textual evidence about magnetic field lines. Okay. Um, so keep that in your mind as you reread this. And again, magnetic fields, that's the space around a magnet in which magnetic forces can act on objects. They come out the north end and go into the south end. A magnetic line is a line that connects opposite magnetic poles and represents the strength and direction of a magnetic field. Okay, so that's how we represent those um, invisible forces. Then we'll move on to activity three, exploring field lines. And you're gonna use the simulator to try to answer this question. How can you tell whether two magnets will attract each other, repel each other, or both? So you'll use the sim to uh, create a scenario where two magnets repel each other and two magnets attract each other. And then you're gonna take a look at the field lines for that. Okay, so fortunately our simulator has that feature where you can turn it on and take a look. So you'll turn on the field lines up here. Okay, that little switch. Um, and then again, you're gonna create two different sims. One where they uh, two magnets attract, one where two magnets repel, and you're gonna observe the magnetic field lines. Click the blue in order to open up the simulator, turn on the field lines, arrange the magnets. I like to use strong magnets for this. Um, so that they attract and repel, run, uh, press the run button, and then analyze to take a look at uh, what's happening, not just what's happening with the magnets, but specifically look at the field lines and see if you can see some patterns there. When the two magnets are repelling, notice where the field lines start and end, okay? And then what about when the two magnets are attracting? Okay, so take a look at what happens with those field lines, specifically where they start and they end, when the magnets are repelling and when they are attracting and, and use the analyze feature to kind of answer those questions. Activity four, we are gonna skip. So I'm just gonna jump through this and go straight to your homework. In your homework, you're going to learn about how electrical fields are very similar to magnetic fields. And we're going to start to see some correlations. And, um, you know, spoiler alert, they are uh, like two sides of the same coin. Okay. So there's an article here called Painting with Static Electricity. You guys are familiar with static electricity. That's uh, what every now and then when you, you touch a piece of metal and it kind of zaps you, that's static electricity. Lightning is also a form of static electricity. So sometimes it can be very, very strong. And we use static electricity in some uh, painting techniques. So you're going to read the article, annotate it. Again, I want three annotations. Okay. And then when you're done with that, we've got some questions. First question, what are some ways that electric fields are similar to magnetic fields? So um, I want you to give me some answers. And the only requirement here is that it has to be using complete sentences, okay? Um, I don't want incomplete sentences. I want sentences that start with a capital letter at the beginning and end with a period that have um, a verb, have a noun, and uh, start to show me your ability to put scientific arguments together using complete sentences. And that will do it. Uh, you can hit submit, turn that in, and then you'll be ready for the next lesson.